the, the policies adopted by these highly successful high growth economies are diametrically opposed to what the IMF, the World Bank, and all the international institutions are recommending countries to do in order to allegedly achieve high growth. Tell me, how many countries have actually succeeded since the creation of the IMF and the World Bank in moving decisively from developing country status to industrialized nation status? When the IMF um, are looking at countries that have developed, why have they deployed um, these policies? Is it because they haven't got the knowledge to understand how to really go about um, rebooting these economies? I think that hypothesis is not tenable. There's no empirical evidence for that. Right. Uh, the, the designers of those policy recommendations for developing countries um, are very smart people. Uh, they do understand key concepts and key realities. So who are they serving? Well, you just need to look at, at the result. The result has been that uh, developing countries have consistently been suppressed in their economic development and their resources have been extracted very efficiently and very cheaply for the benefit of the industrialized countries. So essentially it's a continuation of the colonial relationships on an economic front. This is what the IMF and the World Bank have been overseeing in the last you know, 70 years or so.